Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome, those of you who are in person and those of you who are joining us online. It is wonderful to be in the house of the Lord, whether we're here physically or spiritually. Um, and so thank you for, for checking in with us today. We look forward to uh, being able to lift up the name of the Lord, who has been so good to us, who continues to sustain us even through these different times and, and sometimes difficult times. Um, and always deserves our praise, and, and, and always has a, a job for us, a mission for us, and God expects us to, to seek to glorify him by making disciples of his son Jesus, and we've committed to doing that at Pleasant Hill by seeking to reach out with the love and the good news of Christ, by growing together through worshiping uh, and studying, and through serving God and our neighbors in all that we do, so... Uh, again, thank you for, for being here. Uh, we still aren't printing bulletins for now, but we do post them online. And they have some important information uh, in the bulletins each week, not just the order of the service, um, but also uh, our announcements, uh, birthdays and anniversaries and, and stewardship reports can be found there. Uh, you can go on our website under the About tab. Uh, a little menu will pop down that says Resources. You click on Resources and the weekly bulletin will come up. So if you want a, uh, another way to stay in touch with us, that's, uh, that's a great way to do it. Um, we're going to ask everyone, unless you're here on stage, either giving an announcement or preaching or, or singing or praying, uh, to please keep your mask on during the entire service. Um, and uh, I know that's an inconvenience, uh, but at least we get to be together in person uh, when we do that. And we feel that that's the safest way to gather still for now. Uh, hopefully these limits will be able to be raised at some point in the near future, but we just don't know when. Um, we won't be offering nursery or Sunday school classes for the next uh, little while. Uh, we'll continue to stream our Sunday school lessons each uh, Sunday morning on YouTube and Facebook. And thanks so much to Diane Jordan for, for doing that for us each week. Doesn't she do a wonderful job? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, we are... Um, allowing committees and classes and groups to meet in person uh, if they practice social distancing and if they uh, wear masks. So uh, if your group or class uh, wants to meet in person, just schedule that with the church office and we'll be happy to set up a time. It'll have to be in a larger room like this or, or downstairs in the youth group, uh, youth group room, uh, but we can accommodate you uh, in, in the most circumstances. So we'd love for you to uh, be able to be together. We're continuing to re receive food donations for the Bel Air Food Pantry, so we ask that you continue to remember them as you're out shopping or uh, online shopping. Uh, <laughs> so uh, they, you can imagine their, their need is great through this time. Um, and so let's, let's do our little part in, in, in helping with those needs in our community. Today, I'm excited to announce uh, we'll be having our third drive-through communion service at 4.15 p.m., uh, we'll meet in the parking lot. Uh, please stay in your cars. We'll line you up facing the fellowship hall. Uh, and then tune in to Facebook Live at 4.15. And we'll uh, have a video of me presiding over the communion, doing the great Thanksgiving live. Uh, and then after that, we'll have you guys uh, in order drive through the, uh, uh, the, the portico out front, uh, receive the elements, the, the bread and the juice, and... Uh, and then go about your day. So that's uh, not like we usually do communion, but it's the, the best option we believe we have for now. So uh, please join us today in the parking lot at 4.15 p.m. I want to remind our trustees that you have a meeting scheduled for next Sunday, uh, July the 12th at 5 p.m. That's going to be a Zoom meeting, and Ed will send out the uh, link for that soon. So watch your email for that. I mentioned last week that we are planning on having a back-to-school bash this year. We want to give away free shoes and school supplies to folks in need in our county. Um, we are working on how that will actually look and, 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 and the procedure for that, but we're excited to be able to do that. We still don't know what school is going to look like uh, come August, so please be in prayer for <laughs> those officials and teachers uh, who are making those plans and, and those big decisions, and families too, as it, will, it could affect them greatly. Um, but we want to be prepared to, to do this bash on, on Saturday, August the 8th. Uh, that'll be down at the Springdale Recreation Center in Lancaster, where we did it last uh, uh, August. Uh, it was a great success there, and 
Uh, we're looking forward to doing it again. If you'd like to register to receive shoes or school supplies or to volunteer at the event, uh, you can go to the website, LancasterBackToSchoolBash.com, uh, for more information. We're looking forward to Vacation Bible School starting next Sunday, uh, July the 12th. That'll be uh, a virtual Vacation Bible School, but we have some videos and some take-home packets uh, that will be um, uh, ready to pick up, I believe, starting Thursday, Diane, and then also available next Sunday and at, at, during, at the church office during the, uh, the week after Thursday. So uh, we're excited about that. You'll hear more information uh, in just a few moments about uh, virtual Vacation Bible School. Uh, for this summer. But Mr. Tony Carnes is, is here now, and I'm going to invite him uh, to come up here to give an announcement and an update on the building program. Do we have a mic for him? Okay. Stephen's going to share his mic with you, Tony. Good morning, everyone. Glad to see everybody here this morning, and uh, everyone that's uh, out there in uh, the Facebook land. Welcome to you as well. I just wanted to give a quick update on the uh, building for those who have not been able to ride by or uh, see what's going on. We have, have made great progress over the past few weeks. Um, I think last week we showed we pretty much have completed all of the block and brick work. There's a little bit of that left. This week we were able to complete uh, installing all of the truss work for the uh, ceiling area and uh, roof area of the buildings. Uh, this week they plan on putting the, uh, finishing that up. So ironically we're getting to the point where it doesn't matter if it rains when we're working and the time of year when it doesn't rain. So uh, that, that just, it just works out. But uh, thank, thank you everyone again for supporting we can't do this without your support, and uh, we know that once we get this building completed, it's going to be uh, a huge uh, opportunity for us in mission and ministry for uh, Pleasant Hill and for our community as a whole. I think Wanda's showing some pictures up on the, uh, on the, on the top of the, uh, for those who haven't been able to come by. I would like to remind everyone there's still a construction site, and uh, even though it's uh, feels like it's telling you to come in and take a look that uh, it, is, it is a hard hat area there are now especially things overhead that could fall on you and uh, we want to keep everyone safe and we would ask that you observe from the sidewalk if you do uh, if you do happen to go over there so uh, thank you if you have any questions you can contact myself or Dennis Moore any other member of the building committee and uh, we'll be, tr be glad to try to uh, address any questions that you might have. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, and turn it back over to Joel. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Uh, let's give Tony and the building committee a round of applause for their continued hard work. <laughs> I, I was fortunate. I was uh, leaving the office one afternoon, and uh, they had the crane out outside, and I got to watch them pick up the little pyramid uh, roof portion, uh, the framework for that's going to go over the bell tower. And I caught it on video, and I haven't had a chance to upload it. I need to shorten that video a little bit. But it was really exciting to see that crane pick that up and uh, then uh, raise it up. And it was sort of swaying a little bit, and he just, you know, waited and set it down just, just where it needed to be. It was really cool to see that, so... Uh, a lot of in, important and interesting things going on there, uh, but not as important as what we're going, or, or the, as the ways in which we are going to to use that facility for God's glory, and we need to be praying about that now and making plans for for that now, uh, dreaming about that now, and asking for God's blessings. So y'all join with me in prayer uh, for this wonderful tool for ministry that we have. That's going to be an asset not only for us but for this community, and, and particularly for ho hopefully particularly for those who, who don't know the Lord yet. So let's pray for his blessings there. And remember, uh, ministry definitely uh, happens through the Internet. We have discovered that. Um, and uh, so if, if you see something this morning or hear something this morning that you'd like to share, uh, hit that share button, comment on it, and, and mention why uh, somebody that knows you may, may see what's meaningful to you. And, and because you thought it was meaningful, they may click on it and they may read it or they may watch it and it might touch their lives. So let's consider that uh, as we're uh, present online 
as a church family. And friends, let, uh, let us allow these words from Psalm 80, verses 1 through 3, call us to worship. Hear us, shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who sit enthroned between the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Awaken your might. Come and save us. Restore us, O God. Make your face shine on us that we may be saved. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you for the gift of another Sabbath, another day to worship you. Father, help us to fill your presence with us now and always. And, and thank you, God, for um, the, the call that you put on uh, us as your people and as a church family to make disciples of Jesus Christ, to introduce others to our Lord and our Savior who has given his life for us on the cross that we could be redeemed and, and forgiven of our sins and reconciled with you. Help us, Lord, to find ways to share that extraordinary blessing with others. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Candles, that's always important. Morning, church. I tell you what, it's a great day. And God is so good. Last week, I went home. My heart was so full. I said, I heard my church sing. I heard them sing last. Now, it was kind of like good. But I heard you. And that was good. So this morning, I want you to sing. Keep the mask on. But I want you to sing out and lift up your praise to the Lord and just have an opportunity to worship this morning. I invite you to stand. Let's sing our first hymn, Crown Him With Many Crowns.
get to trouble. I have some trouble rotating my mask and my microphone sometimes, so y'all bear with me. <laughs> Friends, let us share in the Apostles' Creed as our affirmation of faith today. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. I have some good news to report uh, to you today uh, uh, about our finances and, and giving and, and spending. Three weeks ago, I uh, was concerned as I reported that we were $27,000 behind in our expenses versus uh, our giving. Okay, that. Uh, the gap was widening, <laughs> uh, not, not from what we budgeted, because we're underspending our budget, but we were undergiving uh, what we were spending. Today, according to the bulletin that we posted online, we are only $15,000 behind. You know, so you guys are closing that gap. You know, you're helping us to close that gap, and we really appreciate that. This is uh, certainly a, a trying time for all of us. It's a, it's a different and unique time. Uh, but as a church family, uh, we can do our best, and that's all we can do. And I believe if we do that, then the Lord's going to see us through. Uh, and, and if we're faithful and, and trying to do His work and His will and honor His name, then, then we're going to be just fine. So let's all just continue to do what we can. Let's dig down a little, give a l sacrificially a little, and do what we can for God's glory and for His purposes. And uh, it will all work out. So again, thank you for being faithful. Thank you so much for continuing to be faithful uh, in either coming in person or online. It means so much to me and our staff and our other volunteers to see all the activity. Uh, we are grateful for that. Um, and so now it's time for our children's sermon. And we have some guests today, Queen Diane and Queen Liz, who are going to give us some more information about Vacation Bible School. Okay, try again. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it's great to see you here this morning, and all of you that are at home watching, a uh, big welcome to you as well. We're so excited about VBS. I'm going to let Liz tell you a little bit first, and then I've got some more information for you as well. Awesome. So, this Thursday, come down to the church between 9.30 and 12, and we're going to hand out your backpack. Now, that backpack has everything in it that you will need for Staycation Bible School. <laughs> we um, will be starting our Staycation Bible School on July 12th, um, and you will get more information this coming Wednesday in an email to tell you how to access those videos. So we're so excited. July 12th through the 16th is going to be a great time. And I would really like to thank Liz. I'd like to thank my husband, John, my daughter, Becca, who's doing a lot of the technical stuff for me. Um, this has been a new experience, and it's been really exciting to put together a virtual VBS. And on Wednesday, I will send out an email to everyone who has pre-registered for Vacation Bible School. You will be asked to join a private Facebook page. This is because Cokesbury has a lot of copyrighted material that we'll be putting up on the VBS site, and they require us to do this. So Wednesday, look for that email from me. You will need to join the group so that you'll be ready on Sunday to join us for VBS. Also, please know that you do have to pre-register to come pick up a backpack. We have a limited number available, and so we don't want to have somebody who 
registered, not get one. So if you'd like to join us, email me at dce at pleasanthillmethodist.org so we can get your children registered. We'd love to have you join us. We just have to have you pre-register. Also, to those of you who are here today in our congregation, we are going to be putting those said backpacks together right after this service, and you're invited to come and join us for this wonderful activity. So <laughs> we'll feed you, okay? Um, <laughs> but if you'd like to come and help us put these together, we'd love to have you join us. We're so excited about VBS. It is going to be fantastic. So we'll see you on Thursday. Thank you. Thank you, Queen Diane and Queen Liz. Before we move into our prayer time, I'd like for us to uh, pass the peace with one another. I meant to do that earlier today. And let's do it with sign language. Let's stand and give the symbol to one another. Uh, I love you. Uh, three finger, two fingers up and a thumb. Uh, look each other in the eye and, and tell them the Lord be with you. God is, uh, God is with us. God is good. And God loves you. Peace. <laughs> Thank you. Please be seated. I would like to share um, a, a sad announcement with us uh, before we enter our prayer time. Uh, one of our beloved church members, Miss Sandy Baggerly, um, had a death in her family. It was her daughter Wednesday. Uh, when, Wendy passed away on Tuesday of this week. Wendy Moffat, uh, and we want to lift up Sandy and, and her family in our prayers. Uh, Wendy was a, uh, lived in Greenville, South Carolina, and I, I believe the services will be uh, in that area. So uh, Sandy's a resident of Sun City, uh, and um, so please lift up Sandy and her family in your prayers. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lord God, help us to remember that even in the hard times, you are with us. And you are good. The circumstances of our lives don't dictate whether you're good or not. Father, you are good because of who you are. Uh, you are good because you are love. Um, and you are good because you choose to forgive us and claim us as your children, even when we don't act uh, like we should as your children. So God, thank you for being there for us. Thank you for your redemption. Thank you for your son, Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Thank you, Jesus, that you gave your life on the cross for us, that we could be forgiven of our sins, that we could be reconciled with Almighty God, that we wouldn't have to fear God's judgment, but that we could look forward to one day uh, getting to, uh, to, to, to live forever with God. And un until then, you give us the privilege of being able to represent you as your people in this world. Uh, you give us the uh, privilege and the calling to, to share the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, with others. You give us the privilege of, of, and the calling of, of loving our neighbors so that they can see the love of Christ active in us. And Father, help us to be faithful to that. Father, when we realize we've strayed, help us to turn back. Help us to make those corrections that we need to make. Uh, Father, to get back on track with you. Uh, back on track with our witness before others. We're going to slip up. We're going to make mistakes, but help us to make the proper and necessary corrections as well. And Father, we thank you for um, our country. And Father, we thank you for uh, this wonderful privilege of freedom that we have in our country. We thank you for the rights that we have and the protection that we have from our milita military and law enforcement. And, and God, I pray that you will give our country a, a spirit of strength and unity in the right ways. Uh, Father, we are, are so polarized right now on, on many levels. Um, tensions are high. Um, feelings and frustrations are, are, are strong. And Lord, I just pray for your peace. And Lord, I, I believe if, if your peace is going to come to our country, it's going to come through your people. It's going to come through us and, and our attitude. It's going to come through us and and how we interact with people. Um, it'll, it'll come through us and, 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 and what we say and what we laugh at 
or don't laugh at. So God, please help us to lead the way in bringing your comfort and your peace, your wisdom to our country to make it strong in the right ways. Father, we need your help, though. We, we will need to be bold. We will need to be steadfast and persistent. We'll need to be brave. But, Father, we can do it because you are with us. Please remind us of that, Father, and remind us, God, that we are your representatives, where we're, whether we're acting right or not. Help us, Father, to act in proper ways to represent you well. And Father, we all know folks who uh, are suffering right now, those who are battling illness, um, those who are having family difficulties, uh, difficulties at work or in other areas. God, we, we pray for your guidance in their lives. We pray for your healing. Father, we pray for your comfort. And God, we pray that they will have an awareness of, of your great and mighty presence with them. And Father, as we pause for a few moments, we entrust individuals' names and circumstances to you. Doris and John McMakin. Sandy Baggerly. Thank you, Father, for hearing our request. Thank you for listening, and thank you for caring. And we lift up these prayers in the name of your Son, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we pray the prayer that he taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Thank you.
And I, that's my prayer for you. When you leave this place, your spirit will be renewed. And you'll have an opportunity to say, you know, I came and I worshiped with my church today. Thank you. Please be seated. Amen. Thank you, Keith. Stole Keith's music from him earlier, and he, he's, he's removing the temptation now. So. <laughs> That's right. Our scripture lesson for today's sermon comes from the 15th chapter of Luke. Um, I believe the, the scriptures will show up on the screen. They're from the New Revised Standard Version, the NRSV. Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 7. This is one of Jesus's, uh, uh, well, all of his parables were important, but this is um, a very powerful parable that he told us. And, the, and he gives, Luke gives us the context at the very beginning, he says, now... Oh, and if you would, please, stand for the reading of God's Word. Luke tells us, Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling, saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. And so Jesus took that as a teaching opportunity. And he told them this parable. Which of you, having a hundred sheep, and losing one of them does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my lost sheep. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over the 99 righteous persons who have no need of repentance. Friends, this is the word of God for you and me, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. How many of you have lost something and, and searched fervently and, and fervently and earnestly to find it? <laughs> I think everybody, if they're honest, could could raise their hand. Usually it's my car keys about every other day, I feel like, or my phone or, or something I need uh, for the day that I, I forget where I placed it. But uh, some of our pets have gone missing for, for various times, sometimes more than a few days and, and a few very fortunate times. Uh, uh, I remember as, and growing up, our pets would return and, and we were very grateful for that. But I believe all of us have, have lost something very valuable or, or, or misplaced something that was very important to us that we treasured. And when we found it, we were overjoyed. So I think we can identify with what Jesus is teaching here in this parable. And you know, if you, if you, if you think about Jesus' parables, he always told them uh, in, in, in ways that the people that could most easily and, and most readily connect. You know, um, shepherding was common in, in that day and time. And so Jesus talked about shepherding because the people could relate to it. Uh, one of Jesus' main points was to come, uh, purposes, was to reveal who God is in a, in a real and meaningful and relatable and powerful way. And so Jesus uh, talked about very common and, and well-known and well easy to understand things. And we all know that, that shepherds are responsible for the sheep. They take the sheep out to graze. Usually it's not in a fenced-in pasture, but it's out in the open, and so the shepherd would have to lead the sheep and keep up with them while uh, he was on duty. Uh, of course, the, they raised sheep for wool and milk, um, and everyone who heard uh, this parable in Jesus' time would know exactly what Jesus is talking about. But he's not really talking about sheep, is he? He's talking about uh, you and me and all who would hear this parable. You know, you and I can be uh, a lot like sheep. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, uh, you're a sheep. Now y'all tell it to me. <laughs> I'm a sheep too. We're, we're all in this together. Sometimes it's good to know our place in life. We are the sheep. We are not the shepherd. We are the sheep. And unfortunately, sheep aren't very smart. And, and, and compared to the, the wisdom of Almighty God, you and I aren't either. Um, sheep don't always know what's best for them. 
They don't always ask, uh, act in their own best interest. And neither do we. Sheep need the guidance of the shepherd like we need the guidance of God and God's word. And so uh, we can be a lot like sheep. Uh, and, 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 and one of the ways that, that we can be a lot like sheep is that um, a lot of times sheep, well, hardly, I would ne- I'd venture to say a sheep never really intends to get lost or in trouble. They get lost or in trouble accidentally. And a lot of times sheep have their heads down, they're grazing, and they just start nibbling. And they get caught up in the nibbling and they see another little patch and they, they go and nibble there and they nibble there and before long they, they turn around and they don't see their flock, they don't hear their shepherd's voice. And they wonder, how, how did I get so lost? All I was doing was nibbling. You know, when a sheep nibbles, they just take a, a one small baby step at a time. But one baby step after another, after another, after another, without checking your surroundings or, or where you are or where the shepherd is, you can get lost or in trouble pretty easily. And I believe that's the way it is with us to most of us. I don't think any of us really set out to cause ourselves harm or pain or cause harm or pain to someone else. But we end up doing that sometimes uh, by nibbling. Isaiah chapter 56 says, We all, like sheep, have gone astray. You know, we can just slowly wander away from God. We can get distracted or, you know, take one small step after another. And before long, just like one of those sheep, we, we find ourselves in a dangerous situation or in a situation that we regret, we regret, help me say that, regret, <laughs> or never wish we would have been in. Some examples of how we can slowly wander away from what's best for us. You're married, but you notice someone or feel an attraction to or a connection with someone. And, and maybe it's somebody you work with or someone who lives in the neighborhood, or maybe you've connected with an old classmate on social media. And instead of acknowledging your feelings as dangerous and setting the appropriate boundaries to guard your marriage vows or protect your relationship with your spouse and your children, you, you send a text message or you message them on social media or you spend a little more time than is completely necessary with the person. It's innocent at first, but you've made a baby step or two, you know. And you enjoy it and you, you feel a little connection and you take a few more baby steps. You, you think about the person more, you... Uh, you, you may flirt a little and you may question your relationship with your spouse a little more. You spend a little more time, you take a few more baby steps and all of a sudden you end up with a broken marriage, broken-hearted ex-spouse and broken-hearted children and all sorts of guilt and shame and regret because you didn't check your progress along the way you lost sight of the shepherd's voice and you continue to wander one small step at a time or 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 maybe it's a little more subtle maybe you just don't nurture your own relationship with your spouse or children like you should not necessarily doing anything wrong you're just not being intentional about nurturing that relationship you don't realize that relationships are living things and and sometimes they're very tender and and fragile Maybe you're not as kind as you should be or you're not as considerate or thoughtful as you should be. Maybe you don't look out for their needs as as much as you should. You aren't necessarily doing anything hateful or or anything like that, but over time, because you don't nurture that living relationship in the little important ways, the relationship grows weaker and weaker and bit by bit you drift apart and, and years down the road you don't have much of anything except a coexistence. You didn't set out for that, but little by little you wandered, you drifted, you didn't check your progress, and you end up with pain, brokenness, numbness, or regret. Two more examples. Uh, two more examples. A friend gives you a drink, a cigarette, a pill, or, or shows you something you shouldn't see uh, online or, or in a movie, and you say to yourself, well, it's just this once, but you kind of liked it. And a few days or, or a few weeks later, you try it again, and then again, and again, and again, and before you know it, you can end up with a bad habit or hooked on something you wish you had never, ever tried 
in the first place. You never set out for it. But you took too many baby steps, too many nibbles in the wrong direction. And you didn't check your progress. You didn't uh, look for the shepherd or, or listen for his voice. You didn't make the necessary corrections. And you ended up in a situation that you wish you weren't. Last one. And young people need to, to listen to this one. You go out with someone who you find attractive. You have a good time. But a red flag or two went off in your mind because of something they did or, or something they said. Uh, but you ignored it because you're tired of being single and you really want to be in a, in a relationship with someone. So you keep dating. You keep ignoring those red flags and you stay with the person. And years down the road, you end up either unhappily married or uh, you break up with a broken heart and, and frustrated uh, over all the, the investment of time and, and feelings. You didn't set out for this to happen. But you took baby steps along the way. You nibbled. You ignored the red flags. You didn't check your progress. You didn't listen for the shepherd's voice. And over time, you took enough baby steps into a situation that you regret. Please hear me. Be careful who you date. Be careful who you date. It doesn't matter if you're a teenager or an older adult. Be careful who you date. Y'all say that out loud, please. <laughs> Be careful who you date. You know, set really high expectations for yourself and set them for the people uh, that you want to be with. You know, and if mom or dad wouldn't approve, then it's probably a great reason uh, uh, that you will understand very clearly one day, but may seem ridiculous right now. Listen to the voices of wisdom. And friends, if you want to be in a Christian marriage, then don't date someone who isn't actively pursuing a stronger relationship with God. It's probably not going to happen. Set high expectations for yourself. Set high expectations for who you want to be with. Don't date someone you can't trust. Don't date someone who is lazy and, and doesn't want to work. Don't date someone who doesn't treat you or others with respect. If you want a great, healthy relationship, then you yourself strive to be a great, healthy person. And then you look for great, uh, healthy, uh, kind, thoughtful, compassionate, and faithful people. I was talking with a friend one time who was single and who just earnestly wanted some companionship, wanted to, to, to be happily married. And we got to talking and, and we decided, you know, we, you can be single and, and think you're miserable but you can get in an unhealthy relationship and no misery for sure. So friends, just be careful who you date. Be careful who you date. <clears throat> so how, how, thinking about us as, as, as sheep again, how do we keep from nibbling our way into a really bad situation? You know, the, the answer isn't isn't difficult. It's, it's not complicated. The answer is staying in, the, in close connection with God. It's staying close enough to hear the shepherd's voice, close enough for the shepherd to be on our hearts and minds on a regular basis, if not a daily or, or hourly basis. And we check our progress on a regular basis. We don't keep wandering and keep nibbling and nibbling and nibbling. We, we ask the shepherd for advice. We ask the shepherd to guide us. We ask the shepherd to give us wisdom and, and help us to make healthy and, and appropriate steps to be uh, in the right situations and with the right people. We stay close to the shepherd and we make sure we can see him. We make sure we can hear him. Um, I heard a great quote from Aristotle this week and I, I, I double-checked online. Uh, <laughs> to hopefully make sure he actually said it, but he said, you are what you repeatedly do. You are what you repeatedly do. A sheep who repeatedly wanders is going to end up where? Lost and away from the shepherd. You are 
what you repeatedly do. Now, what are some good things? Think to yourself, what are some good things that you repeatedly do? You know, think about those things and then pat yourself on the back for them. But also think about what are some, what are some not so good things that I repeatedly do? Let's think about those things. That's a, that's a way to check our progress. That's a way to, to make sure we got our eyes on the shepherd and our ears tuned to the shepherd. You know, uh, you are what you repeatedly do. And so he finished the quote, uh, so excellence isn't an act, it's a habit. You are what you repeatedly do, so excellence isn't an act, it's a habit. That's some good words from a smart, smart man uh, that we can apply to our Christian lives. You know, and in this parable, Jesus put a lot of emphasis on the one lost sheep. And that isn't saying uh, that the 99 who don't wander aren't as important. It's not saying that at all. It's saying that that lost one is the one who needs attention right now. Because one day, it might be you. Because do we get lost on purpose usually? Not usually. We usually get lost on accident. We take a few wrong steps in the in the wrong direction. We don't check our progress enough. And accidentally, we, we veer and, and, and stray from God. But Jesus is teaching us that uh, that lost sheep, no matter who you are, are also God's children whom God deeply loves and, and deeply cares about, whom God is willing to forgive, who are worth searching for. Lost sheep are valuable. They are worth searching for. Not because they deserve it, uh, not because of, of what they've done or, or who they, but because of who they are, because they are children of God, children of God of the king. So no matter how far you've strayed, intentionally or unintentionally, you are a sheep worth searching for. You are a sheep whom God deeply, deeply loves. I said earlier that that we are are sheep, and we all, like sheep, can go astray at times. But the Bible also calls us to do some shepherding as well. You know, God is repeatedly referred to in the the scriptures as, as the good shepherd or as the chief shepherd. And when Jesus came, he embodied God as the good shepherd, even uh, gave himself that name, I am the good shepherd. You know, and, and Jesus led us and taught us. But Jesus has ascended into heaven. And before Jesus ascended into heaven, he, he delegated and entrusted his work to us as his people. He gave us the great commission of going out into all the world and making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that he's taught us. Jesus has placed God's kingdom in our hands. And he's entrusted us to manage it and to serve and work in it until he returns. He's called us to be mindful of lost sheep. He's called us also to do some shepherding. To shepherd one another. To to care for those who are lost. To care for those who are within the fold. To help keep them within the fold. But very importantly, to be mindful of lost sheep. To go searching for them. To gently lead them back to God. So one of the purposes for us as a church and as individuals, as God's people is to find lost sheep and bring them back to God, to care for those who have wandered, to care for those who may have never known the love of God. Aristotle said, we are what we repeatedly do. Let's be a people who commit to repeatedly praying that God would use us as individuals and as a congregation to encourage and inspire others in meaningful and powerful ways to believe and and trust that there is a God who is good, that there is a God who loves them and who wants them to have hope, who has a purpose for their life and who has given his son as an atoning sacrifice for their sins. Let's repeatedly pray for God to use us to draw people to him and not push them away by being too pushy 
are judgmental. But to be a people of love and of truth and of courage. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. benediction today, I would like for us to read together the words of Psalm 23, remembering that we are sheep. Do we have verse 1? It's okay. I think we know verse 1 anyway. We can, we can sort of say verse 1 after me. Uh, you can repeat after me. The Lord is my, my shepherd. shepherd. 
I shall, shall not want. want. He, he makes, makes me, me lie down, down in green pastures. pastures. He, he leads, leads me beside the still waters. He, was, he, he, he restores my soul. My soul. He, he leads, leads me in right paths for, for his name's sake. sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And, and I, I shall, shall dwell, dwell in, in the house, house of the Lord my, my whole life long. Friends, the Lord Amen. is our shepherd. And we as his sheep need to stay close enough to him to keep an eye on him and to hear his voice. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you and go in peace. Amen.